I want to maybe talk a little bit about in your in your article you spoke about you know how power stations were you know built in 1881, but as late as 1910, you know manufacturers were still relying on on steam power. Yeah. Uh, my question to you is is why was that the case? And do you think that we're going to be experiencing something similar with digital transformation, where it's going to take corporates maybe 30 years to start embracing data science, AI, and, and other forms of technology in their business? Yes, uh, I mentioned that example in, in, in the article. And uh, I think, uh, I, I mean, uh, I was also quite surprised when I read the, the facts about the, the electricity industry and how long it took for for, uh, for it to become mainstream in manufacturing. Um, the issue uh, it, it was quite an interesting one. The power was available, but uh, if you think of factories, factories were set up in a way that was consistent with a previous source of power, which was uh, uh, steam power. So, so that meant that instead of having what we recognize today as a production line, the the activities in the factory had to be organized so that they could draw the power from the steam pipes uh, that uh, had to be orchestrated in a very specific way. So what that meant was that when the electric power was available, substituting uh, uh, the source of power from steam to electricity didn't change that much and was not uh, very easy because while the, the source was there, the business was not ready to, 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 to change. And that's why it took 20 years. Factories had to be rearranged, uh, rebuilt pretty much. You had to remove all the sh shafts and all the, all the pipes that were there to, to support uh, the delivery of steam power. They had to be rearranged so, uh, because with, uh, with electric power, you have a flexibility that you did not have before. And that's when uh, production lines as we recognize them today started to appear. Uh, and that took uh, 20 to 30 years. Uh, now, when we think about, uh, uh, you know, what, that, what does that mean for, uh, for uh, fintech and data today? I think the first thing is that, is that it suggests to me is a degree of caution about uh, those statements that things are going to change uh, tomorrow. Now, that does not mean that they're not going to change. And those that do not change, it could become like a Kodak. Okay? But uh, I think uh, it, it's, it's a little bit of the reassurance that uh, you know, it's, it's not the immediate change what we are looking at here. It's more about uh, that long-term change that unfortunately is easy to postpone because mm -hmm. it's not today's problem. And, uh, and that there yes. may well be bigger problems today in, in any one business. But it is something that you have to tackle sooner or later. Um, and I think it, that it, there is also that, uh, that little bit of generation uh, that unfortunately plays a role here. People you know, are driven by perhaps first, also by first impressions. So for example, uh, like it or not, when people think about blockchain, they are thinking about cryptocurrencies. But you know, and I know that they, they are two very different technologies. But mm -hmm. people's, in people's minds, the, there is an association there that perhaps doesn't help uh, the blockchain technology to be adopted as it could if we never experienced cryptocurrencies and all the other all comments that, and uses that we've heard about the cryptocurrencies. So, so, so I think it, the, 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 there is the, 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 the time in terms of uh, that is needed for, for the business transformations and the perceptions that have been generated that don't really help them. But I, I'm optimistic um, I, the same way that electricity is today a fact of life. I, I think that with many of the technologies that today we, we regard as novelties, there will be business as usual within five or 10 years time. They, they may not still be mainstream entirely and they may not be everywhere, but they will be much more prevalent than they are today. And, and uh, let's not be also very, very, uh, very uh, harsh on ourselves. Uh, you know, when you know, we, we, we are, I mean, uh, one of the things about uh, um, artificial intelligence is that we are using a lot of it without realizing already. Mm -hmm. When I'm typing anything on my telephone, uh, you know, the spell checker is already, you know, it's using a, 
artificial intelligence. In fact, I like to see how uh, I enjoy seeing how it learns of what I type. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so, so you know, and that's just a token example. There, there are many more and better examples about how technologies, uh, you know, fintech, AI, is already shaping a lot of the things we do in financial services and elsewhere. So, so I think it, I think it, I was I was listening to someone yesterday speaking of the of the inflection point in an in an exponential curve. Uh, so, so, so I think we we may be on the cusp of that. Uh, uh, change and so suddenly it looks big, but not big enough. Uh, but but I think it's uh, you know we, we are at, the, at that time when it looks like uh, it hasn't been changing for a lot of long time, but it should have been changing. But now it's starting to change. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, it, you look at those those hype cycles, and you have the the innovators, the people who, you know who create the new technology. You have the the early adopters who try and get you know some get in the door quite quickly. And then you have all the various different stages. You even get, you know, the final ones that they call them the stragglers who, you know, kind of like say, fine, we're going to adopt this. We don't want to, but everybody else is doing it. And if we don't, you know, we might as well clo close up our shop. Um, and I mean, as, as, a rec uh, as a risk practitioner, where do you see most of the resistance coming from uh, within the corporate? You know, is it the, the, the tone at the top? You know, is it the board members who are saying, OK, maybe let's wait till tomorrow? Is it the executive team um, or is it just the employees who maybe don't want to change the processes that they've been doing and want to rather stick to, to how, yeah, how things have been always done? Like, yeah, where would you say that the biggest resistance is coming from within these businesses to the digital transformation? I don't think that there is a generic answer to your question. Uh, I think different businesses have different uh, pain points. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in some cases, it may be a matter of uh, priorities. So the business have more pressing priorities in the short term. I think there are also other cases where the challenge with fintech is that it requires a certain investments in technology, which are feasible if you've been keeping up with investments in technology over a period of time. If you haven't, then there is a significant gap there that has to be addressed before you can make the investments in fintech. So, so, so that's a very different scenario from the first one. Um, I think in all cases you've got a, an issue with uh, em, uh, with employees because the perception uh, or the misperception perhaps is that uh, you know you're going to lose your job, and uh, and I think that people react to those misperceptions uh, because that's all there is to be honest. So 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 that's also another consideration that that has to be taken into account in any program of this nature to ensure that. You know the, the human side or the, or the human risk is being managed appropriately. Uh, not not uh, uh, not only in terms of uh, avoiding the you know the bad outcomes happening, but also in terms of getting the best out of people. Uh, be, because if you think of that of those scenarios where uh, you know we were describing earlier uh, about the radiographer that gets now the, the the predictions from the AI machine, he needs to understand what he's getting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all very well to have someone that designs the the, the actual uh, um, the, the actual model and, and maintains the model, but you then need to ensure that many people in the business that are not specifically um, AI practitioners can understand and take delivery of of those outputs and and make use of them in the normal course of work. So that requires a a, a significant engagement with the with the, uh, and with employees to ensure that they achieve that level of competency. Mm -hmm. no, look, I mean, it's, it's it's been interesting, you know, talking to to some of my friends who are also, you know, consultants and going into the business and, and some of them, especially here in South Africa, you know, the mining industry is quite big and they say they've had quite a little bit of frustration with the, the older generation who in some ways don't even want to move to computers or scanning documents or anything like that. They want to maintain a paper uh, you know, file system, which for me, you know, I think is is absolutely crazy because, you know, I've, I've grown up with Excel and, you know, computers and technology, but I kind of hope that I'm not going to be in the same boat, you know, maybe say 30 years later because technology is going to keep increasing and I might, you know, become a little bit stubborn or, or stuck in my ways and say, no, this is the software I like, um, you know, I don't want to change to the other ones. So it's 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 interesting to see that that human resistance 
Um, of course, there's also the, the stories of, you know, some people might think, oh, the machines are going to come in and take away my jobs. So we are purposely going to try and, you know, avoid using them or, or something like that. Of course, these are these are extreme stories to just try and make that point that, you know, there is that resistance um, coming from the business. And like you say, it can sometimes come from from different aspects. Um, Isaac, I, I am aware that, you know, we we are coming up to, to the end of our hour. I think we have 15 minutes left. So I want to use those 15 minutes, maybe asking you to talk more about this dinner that, that will be hosted uh, in September. Um, what can people expect? Who should attend? And yeah, what are going to be some of the highlights? So I think uh, this dinner on the 19th of September uh, will be a, a good opportunity to uh, have a discussion with the senior risk practitioners in the industry about uh, ideally how they can be part of the answer uh, and how they can help uh, support the business go through the transformation that everyone I think agrees that uh, uh, agrees need, 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 needs to take place but uh, where we see that uh, there is a degree of uh, reluctance to fully embrace it uh, it's not a, it's not a, it will not be a conversation where we all come out with an answer but hopefully there will, there, there, will be, there will be an interesting conversation around the table where we all feel that we've learned perhaps a, a something that might help us progress those conversations. Because at the end of the day, many of them are happening today. They may not be progressing at the speed uh, that the technologists might like, and they may not be happening at the speed that the CEO would like to, to, to enhance the, uh, the bottom line but they are happening and the question is what can be done to support the, those uh, activities. And so, so, so if, I, if, if everyone that comes to, to, uh, to the dinner leaves with one idea to, uh, to explore something back in the office about how to support the business uh, or how to use, sorry, risk management to support the business, I think uh, you know, that dinner would have been very worthwhile. Okay, fantastic. Look, I'm going to hopefully be at the dinner. I just need to sort out my, my visa in order to get into the UK, uh, Yeah, which is, is going to be a, a little bit of a pain pill to swallow. But hopefully I'm going to be there. Um, I'd love to yeah, see you in person and Likewise. continue this conversation further. And to all our listeners, thank you for, for staying tuned. And like I say, please check the description of this video for more information about that event. Keep well. Cheers.